A beautiful young woman comes up to my door. She seems pretty excited about her date with me today, and she shows <laughs> off that she even made a lunchbox for the occasion. I don't remember having a date with her though. I quizzically ask who she is, but she doesn't seem to understand the question. She's obviously Ree's girlfriend, and she seems almost offended that I asked her such a strange thing. She begins suspecting that I have another reason for not letting her inside my house. Perhaps I'm too timing on her with that girl at the office. She demands to know where this homewrecker is. I get a word in and correct her, explaining that I'm not Ray. She apologizes profusely for the mix-up. She had forgotten to put on her contacts in her rush to leave home. A week has passed since I last spoke to that strange girl. I notice that a lot of noise seems to be coming from outside, and I realize that my next-door neighbor has moved out. I never see his face, just the movers carrying out various pieces of furniture. I return to the comfort of my home, but a few moments later, the doorbell rings. As I slowly open the door, the girl from last week peeks in. She fidgets in place as she asks me if I still remember her. I nod, still fondly remembering that she's the girlfriend of the guy who just moved out. She closes her eyes out of fatigue and reveals that she broke up with him the other day, and I offer my sympathies. She explains that the fool was having an affair, or rather, was too timing on her. Despite having such a beautiful and loving girlfriend, Ray would often bring other women into his home under the pretext of work or just being good friends. I get slightly angry on her behalf and ask what kind of idiot would do such a thing to a kind young lady. She shakes it off to lighten the mood, and she explains that she's come here today to apologize for the inconvenience she caused me when she last visited. She gingerly holds up a small paper bag with a cake she baked herself. I reassure her that there's no problem. I invite her inside and offer to brew her some tea. She must have had a rough day. My hospitality seems surprising to her, and her eyes light up at the offer. She's practically beaming. She happily accepts my invitation, and she steps inside my apartment. She looks forward to spending some time with me, and she apologizes for the intrusion. Unfortunately, I don't immediately notice the hollow look in her eyes as she shuts the door behind her. I apologize for the mess, since I wasn't exactly expecting company. The girl pays it no mind and comments that my room is actually tidier than I let on. I wonder if she's just being polite. I prepare to head to the kitchen to cut and serve the cake, and I ask the girl if she'd be willing to wait for a cup of tea. She looks up and explains that the cake is hardly big enough to cut into individual slices. She asks to not worry about her share and that she'd be happy if I'd enjoy it myself. She says my name, Ikuto, but my mind finally clicks. I've never told her my name. I turn to the girl and ask her how she knows it. The girl manages to make an excuse that some of my mail ended up in her ex-boyfriend's mailbox before, and she remembered my name because it seemed unusual. This seems plausible enough, and I don't think any more of it. She apologizes for freaking me out for a second, and she seems genuinely remorseful. She realizes that she hasn't told me her name yet. She introduces herself as you. She remarks that it seems like fate has brought us two together, and she hopes that the two of us will get along. I have slightly mixed feelings about getting closer with you, especially after she just broke up with my neighbor. There are plenty of red flags here, but I'm colorblind. Again, I fail to notice the color disappearing from her eyes. I carefully open and take out the cake that you baked for me. The arrangement of the small cake is delightful. It even has strawberries, my favorite. She hopes it suits my palate, and she anxiously watches me dig in. I take out a fork, and I notice her looking at me, and I tell her that she's making me nervous. I finally take a bite out of the shortcake and find it to be absolutely delicious. Mm. You is incredibly relieved. She explains that it's been a while since she made a cake and drugged it, so she was worried that I'd noticed that it tasted different. <gasps> Wait, you drugged it? My head becomes a hazy mess, and my vision becomes blurry. I should be panicking, but I am strangely at peace. I see a sinister <laughs> smile form on Yu's face. Everything goes dark, and the last thing I hear is Yu wishing me a good night's sleep. I slowly reawaken and my head is aching. I have no memory of what just happened. You was here one second and then the next. I feel something soft and warm on my cheek. I open my eyes and see you staring down at me. Her hand was apparently caressing me as I slept. I ask how I ended up falling asleep and she explains that I must have been incredibly tired from work. I take her explanation at face value, but I realize that my head is on her lap. I jump away out of embarrassment and basic decency as this isn't something I'd usually do with a girl I just met. You chuckles and reassures me that there's nothing to worry about since she greatly enjoyed watching my sleeping face. I don't really know how to react to that. I'm just nervous I can't believe I fell asleep on Yu's lap like that, even if I've been working overtime lately. I notice that it is already well past six in the evening, and Yu lets out a surprised gasp, 
She prepares to exit the door as she believes that she has already overstayed her welcome. I apologize for not being a better host, but she reassures me that it's okay. She boldly asks me if it's okay for her to visit again, and I see no issue with it. I tell her that I'd be happy to have her again, and she laughs. She looks forward to seeing me again. I go back into my room, daydreaming about how cute you was. However, I do wonder why I ended up falling asleep. I notice that the dishes have already been washed and put away, while the room looks even tidier than usual. You must have fixed up the house while I was out of it. I almost feel guilty about it. Meanwhile, Yu clutches a key to Ikuto's apartment. Yu happily hangs out the clothes to dry since today is laundry day. She ends up touching Ikuto's underwear, and she nearly shies away out of embarrassment. However, even if it is embarrassing, Yu encourages herself to do her best for Ikuto's sake. She is, after all, planning to become Ikuto's ideal girlfriend. I come home later that evening, but I am weirded out that my laundry already seems to be out. I quickly call my mother and ask her if she dropped by earlier, but she denies it. The only other duplicate key to my apartment is at her house, so I make plans to visit home to retrieve it. Something seems odd, but I can't quite pinpoint what it is yet. Meanwhile, you, with the sketch layer back on, happily listens to something on her phone. It turns out that she is eavesdropping on Ikuto, and she overhears him talking to his mother about his laundry being mysteriously done. Yu laughs that Ikuto thought that his mother went all the way to Ikuto's apartment to do the laundry. Really, how silly of him. A few days later, Yu spies on Ikuto from afar as he heads off into the office. She can barely contain her excitement at how good he looks in a suit. She's practically trembling. A few guys notice Yu and admiring her good looks and good figure. They decide to try and chat her up. They try hitting on Yu, and they ask her if she wants to have some fun with them. But Yu's eyes go dark, losing any semblance of humanity and decency. With a sharp tone, she tells them that she's meeting up with the man she loves, and she curtly asks them to go away. Better yet, they should stop breathing. One of the guys whispers to the other this girl is bad news and that it is in their best interest to leave her alone. The other guy finds it hilarious that he'd lose his nerve over something like this, but the guy doesn't care. They should leave now. At exactly 6 in the evening, I head out of the office after a rare early day at work. I'm exhausted. I suddenly bump into a girl, scattering her groceries on the floor, but it turns out to be you. What a lovely coincidence. She seems pleasantly surprised to see me, and she explains that she closed her store early to do a bit of shopping. I'm still surprised to see her, but more so to learn that she owns and operates a store. While helping her pick up her groceries, my hand ends up on top of her, and I can almost audibly hear her heart beating. Yu says she bought a little too many groceries today, so she tries to invite me out. However, before she can finish her sentence, she is interrupted by the cheerful cry of senpai, coming from one of my subordinates. I don't notice it, but Yu's mind nearly snaps. A short-haired, cheery girl comes running up to me and Yu. I'd recognize her demeanor and signature fang anywhere. It's Idano, my bright-eyed junior, inviting me out for drinks. She finally notices Yu and asks who she is, but before Yu can claim to be my girlfriend, Adana does it for her. She loudly asks if Yu is my girlfriend, but I hastily say that she's mistaken. I quickly explain the situation. Yu is simply the ex of my former neighbor, and after a few complications, the two of you ended up friends. When Adana gets the gist of the situation, she is greatly relieved, a remark that does not go unnoticed. Yu stares daggers at this interloper. Adana calls out to my other coworker, Matsuda, claiming that I can join them for a drink. What the heck? I haven't even said anything yet. I'm also worried that you might feel a little out of place. Adana drags Matsuda over, who seems to be instantly smitten by you. He introduces himself as one of my colleagues, and you politely nods her head. Adana waves goodbye to you and tries to drag me with her and Matsuda. But I remember that you was still talking to me, and I try to ask her what she was talking about. Matsuda, upon hearing that I had prior plans, almost lets me leave, but for some reason he stays silent. You puts on a brave face and lets me go with my coworkers reassuring me that she can visit me anytime she wants. She happily promises to bake some cookies for me next time, and I happily look forward to it. Idana snaps at Matsuda to do the thing, and he quickly slings his arm around me and leads me to our favorite local bar. Idana says goodbye again to you, and I also wave from afar. You, with a smile on her face, also waves goodbye. However, once both are out of earshot, Idano and you stare daggers into each other's backs. There can only be one. I take my seat with Matsuda and Idano at our favorite bar and booth. It's a busy Friday night. Idano talks about the traffic accident we all saw on the way over, and she expresses how afraid she was. 
Matsuda chimes in and says that a car crashed into two young men, and he worries for them. I nod out of sympathy. It's a terrible thing. Idana says she's somewhat worried about going home alone after witnessing an accident like that. But my thoughts admittedly wander to you, whom I know also had to walk home alone. Idana glances at me and notices that I was thinking of something else. She asks me what was on my mind, and I admit that I was thinking of you and worried about her safety. I must have offended Idana somewhat because she becomes rather grumpy and points out that she's right here. I stutter out an apology. Matsuda jokes that he's also here, but Idana stomps on his shoe with her heel. Idana reassures me that you will be okay on her own. Elsewhere, you has begun doing her homework, and through her innate investigation skills, she has unearthed basically every detail about Idana's life. For example, she is 24 years old, her parents are alive and well, most importantly, she lives alone. Matsuda stands up and heads to the toilet, leaving me alone with a slightly tipsy Edano. She asks me if I no longer plan to drink. I tell her I've drunk enough, but I express concern as to how she'll be able to make it back home alone. Edano sits up and says she'll be fine, but she shares that she's slightly worried about something. I ask her what's on her mind, and she suddenly reaches out to me with both her hands. She asks if I'd be willing to go with her somewhere, just the two of us. I'm stunned by this sudden invitation and my hand is shaking. I don't know how to respond. I jerk my hand back and apologize. I point out that we both had a little too much to drink, and whatever important thing she has on her mind might be better left for next week. Idana seems almost devastated by my answer. When Matsuda returns to the table, we all head back to the entrance. We walk a short distance toward an intersection, where we all go our separate ways. I entrust Idana's safety to Matsuda, and he reassures me that she'll be safe and sound. Matsuda and Adano walk through a relatively empty street. Matsuda says that Adano seemed rather cold this evening. Adano tells him to shut his useless mouth. They stop by a nearby store and Matsuda excuses himself for a moment. Adano suddenly receives a phone call from a number she does not recognize. She says hello to the seemingly empty line, but she hears a familiar voice. You asks Adano if she enjoyed her little get-together with Ikuto. Adano's alarm bells go ringing. Adano recognizes Yu's voice if not a bit caught off guard by the sudden call. She asks her where she got this number, but Yu doesn't answer. Yu apologizes for calling at such a late hour, and she asks Idano if she could do her just a teensy little favor. Yu recounts the little altercation she had with her ex-boyfriend, and she acknowledges that she might have been a little at fault for failing to warn the girl he cheated on her with. This time, she won't make that mistake. She asks Idano to promise not to go near Ikuto from now on if she values her life. Idana nearly spits out her non-existent drink and lets out a hearty laugh. She wasn't sure what she meant by favor. She settles down a bit and promises you that she and Ikuto are simply co-workers. A simple junior and senior. There's absolutely nothing to worry about. Yu thanks her for being so cooperative, and she'll take her word for it. However, someone seems to be approaching Idano in the darkness. Matsuda finally returns after a few minutes with an armful of bottles. He notices that Idana seems to be acting strangely, and he asks her what's wrong. Idana smiles and says that she changed her mind. Later, as I prepare to turn in for the night, I worry that I might have rejected Idana a little too harshly, but I can't exactly say that I thought of you when she invited me out alone. Tired and exhausted, I prepare to head to bed, but I hear someone ring the doorbell. It rings twice more, followed by two quick raps. I wonder who could possibly be visiting me this late at night. I look through the peephole and see Matsuda trying to help up a clearly wasted Idano. I hurriedly open the door and ask Matsuda what happened. He explains that the two of them went for another round of drinks, but he left her for a few minutes, and when he came back she was completely wasted. He doesn't know where she lives, so he had little choice but to bring her here. I place my hand on my hip and rub my temples. I let out a sigh. I can't leave Idano like this, so I let Matsuda bring her inside until she sobers up. He sits her down on the floor and carefully removes her shoes, but he suddenly excuses himself, claiming that he has to be up early tomorrow. He leaves me behind with a drunken Idano. I feel uncomfortable letting a female co-worker into my house at this hour, but I have little choice since she's in no state to go home like this. I help Idano in my apartment and offer her some water in the meantime, but I fail to notice the foxy grin forming on her face. Outside, Matsuda walks home with a worried and pained expression on his face. He hopes that he did the right thing.